We are going into the word. And today we are looking at the topic under grace. And our anchor scripture, Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. And the easy to read version of that verse says, You, the second part, you now live under God's grace. You now live under God's grace. I want to believe you have your notes, you have your Bible with you. If not, go get them. Prepare your heart to receive the word. You see, Paul speaking to Thessalonian church, he said, We rejoice to paraphrase him that when you receive the word of God, when you heard the word of God, you did not take it as men's words and ideas, but you took it as what it is indeed in truth, and that is the word of God. You took it as the word of God, you didn't take it as something else, you didn't take it as just the ideas of men. So I want you right now to listen, knowing that the Word of God can transform and change your life. So the scripture says, He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them out of their troubles and delivered them out of their distresses and delivered them out of their uh, tight corners, if I'm going to use a modern word. If you have your Bibles, then I want you to turn with me as we begin for the second service in the first service we began looking at the topic under grace if you can i uh, um, advise you to check out the teaching of the first service is available on our facebook page just search for us i in christ if you already like our page it's available there you read it and be blessed you listen rather and be blessed but we started by saying that John chapter 1 verse 17 made it clear. Grace and truth came by Jesus. Jesus Christ came to bring us grace and truth. And then we established that grace is not the opposite of the law. Not necessarily I begin this way because some see grace as the opposite of the law. And end up doing things that are not consistent with grace. Remember I said again we now live under God's grace. But grace is not the opposite of the law. We we'll look at that some other day by, his, by God's grace. Amen. But grace is not the opposite of the law. And we saw that in Matthew chapter 5, 17 and 18. Jesus Christ said he didn't come to abolish the law. He didn't come to cancel the prophet. He said, but rather I came to fulfill them. I came to establish them. I came to act as the culmination of the law. And then we started by saying that grace is right standing with God. Our eternal abode is settled. Then we went on to say that grace is an empowerment for excellence. To produce excellent work. To do the impossible and so now today, in the second service, Romans chapter 17, we look at the next. What is, does it mean to live under grace? That's because Jesus Christ has brought grace and truth. Does not mean that you are automatically living under grace. Because our experiences in life is subject to our belief. Our experience in life is subject to faith. Remember in Hebrews chapter 4, he says, Let us therefore be careful, lest we do not enter into the rest. He said, because those that were easy for the examples in the scriptures the Hebrews chapter 3 before chapter 4 he said these ones could not enter into the rest because of unbelief so we should be careful less because of unbelief we do not enter into the rest the grace the truth that Jesus Christ has brought for us Romans chapter 7 grace is not just right standing with God it is also right living with God you know many have known grace and which is true grace right standing with God all sins forgiven God overlooking all our wrongs. But that is not where grace ends. Now this of course these are basic things. But necessary I share them. With you. Grace. Is beyond right. Standing with God. Is also right living with God. Because grace. Impacts you or gives you the ability. And the desire to live right. You see if. You are a Christian. Or a new creature in Christ. And all you care about grace is how that grace means that no matter what wrong you do, you are covered. And that is all you want in grace. Then you are a prime suspect. Perhaps you got in through the window. Or perhaps you are just living in ignorance. Grace is not just forgiveness of sin and overlooking of sin. And right standing with God. It is also right living with God. And I'm going to be showing that from scriptures. Romans chapter 7. I believe you are already there. From verse 19, now Paul was talking about the whole struggle of the law and all. Verse 19, he said, Now then, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 
verse 16. Let me start from verse 16. He says, If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now verse 19, For the good I would do, for the good I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. You know, the way this scripture is written, it is quite easy for someone to misunderstand what Paul is saying here. So I'm just going to try to help us understand the scriptures. Now Paul was saying, he was talking about the struggle. He says, I want to do good, but there is a nature in me, the sin nature, that makes me to do wrong. And so I struggle with doing what I ought to do. I struggle. Paul says, I struggle. He says, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members making me to do the opposite of what I want to do. So I struggle. I have it hard, tough time. Then he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Who will deliver me from this problem that I find myself in? And verse 25 is the answer. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now just to help the Bible scholars in our midst, you see the remaining part of the verse, so then with my mind I serve and all and all. May be a little bit confusing, so let me help you here. You see, after verse 23, you add the remaining part of verse 25 is a continuation of verse 23. So now if you put 24 and the first part of 25 in a bracket, then you get the idea of what Paul was trying to say. Because if you go to chapter 8, he says, Therefore now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. For the Lord of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the Lord of sin and death. So he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ. He came to set me free from the challenge I had before. So for the Bible scholars, again, I say, if you're using the King James Version, all you have to do is put verse 24 and verse 25, the first part, A, in a bracket. And then 23 and the other part of 25 are together. So the, the insert there is just Paul asking a question and then answering the question. Say, what a challenge is this? I want to do good, but evil is with me who will help me who will set me free and the answer is jesus has done it and then he confirms what he's saying there in verse chapter 8 so that with the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh because of the sin nature the lord of moses could not get this done christ have come to get it done through grace so basically what i'm trying to say here is that grace living under grace is receiving empowerment to live a holy life the desire for sin is dead because our old man, we've put away the old man and his conversation and his way of life and his way of thinking and his way of acting. And we've put on a new man which is renewed daily after Christ, after the image of God. Even as we expose ourselves to the word of God. You are, need, I find myself having to tell this to Christians over and over again. We do not have two natures. Because the scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. A scripture which we know very well. He says that whosoever is in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold all things have become new. He's a new creation. It's not a refurbishing of the old. But of something new. So we don't have two natures, we have only the Christ nature in us. No wonder the scripture says we have the mind of Christ. And concerning the new covenant, uh, the book of Hebrews, quoting the prophet Jeremiah, said that I will, put, I will put my spirit upon them, a new spirit will I give to them. And I will write my laws in their heart. I will take away their stony flesh, their rebellious spirit, and I will give them a new spirit. I will write my laws in their heart. And I will not need anyone to teach, say, know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. That is living under grace. 
Grace eliminated a desire and a hunger for sin. And if you are still struggling with sin, then it's because that you are ignorant of what grace has offered or you are not applying grace. Remember, in the first service, I pointed out that it's not so much of how much grace you've received, but it's so much of what you are doing with the grace you have received. Because Paul received grace. Peter received grace. Just to repeat again what I started in the first service. But Paul today is more known than the others because he walked with his own grace. He said, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet it was not I, but the grace had worked in me. So he applied the grace and produced results. Grace is desire to live right. If that is missing, grace is not complete. The sin nature is eliminated. You see, Paul speaking said, concerning the old sacrifices that were made, he said that every year it was necessary that there be a remembrance of sin because the people were bound to sin. But he said, Jesus Christ have come to, to do the sacrifice once and for all. Why is this sacrifice done once and for all? Not only because this is an everlasting sacrifice, the blood that will cover sins forever, but because he also took away the desire to sin. You need to understand, I need to accept this. This is grace. This is what it means to live under grace. You see, the people could not understand grace in Paul's time. That is why he had to explain to them, since we continue in sin, for grace to abound. If it therefore means that we are completely forgiven, should we therefore continue in sin? Because the people could not just understand it. said, if there is no consequence for sin, then why should I live right? If there is no consequence for sin, the reason why you should live right is because you are a child of God. You know, it's only a goat that will be concerned with if there is no punishment for eating the leaf or eating yam. Then why shouldn't I eat the yam? I mean, a dog in the first place is not concerned with yam. So whether there is a law against eating yam or there is no law against eating yam is of no business or no concern to him. The little one that Paul speaking to Timothy said that the law is given for the unrighteous. Because that the ones that need it, the righteous is already embedded in his heart. And then the Apostle John yet again said, You need no man teach you because the unction that is in you shall teach you all things, shall guide you into all truth. The Christian race is not a grace of struggle with sin, trying to make heaven. If that is your perspective, you have the wrong perspective. You are not living under grace. Or at least you are not living under the fullness of grace. Let me put it that way. You need to understand what grace offers and expose and release yourself to grace. Romans chapter 6 again, sit on this topic. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, it's not charging. Romans chapter 6 and verse 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. It says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. The power of sin and the sin nature is broken. The power of sin and the sin nature is broken. So sin cannot have dominion over you because you are living under grace. Now, what else does it mean to live under grace? Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. From verse 1 to 5, we are looking at under grace. What does it mean to live under grace? Romans chapter 4 from verse 1 to 5. It says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that walketh is a reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You see, living under grace implies that we have zero. How will I put this now? We, are, we, don't, we no longer operate based on self performance. 
See, we have received all things freely from God because of Jesus Christ. It's not about our effort. It's about faith now. It's about aligning with the word. I said next service we're going to be looking at faith to understand really what faith is and how faith operates. Because the Christian life is all about faith. But you see, it's not about our effort anymore. We, we, we ought to operate with a different understanding that when we are living under grace. We can't expect to receive reward. You know, just as the scripture said, it says if someone is to receive anything based on his works, then it's a debt. That means you have been owed. It's your right. But that is not how grace works. We receive freely all things because of what Christ has done. So it's not based on what we have done. It's not about how much we've prayed. It's not about how much we fasted. It's not about how much we've studied. I mean, these things are important. And we'll be seeing that very soon. But it's about the mindset. It's about understanding that we receive all things freely from the Father because of Jesus Christ. So we can't come to God and say, because I've done A and B, so I should receive this. Neither should we live with the mindset that I need to do A, B, C, and so on and so forth. Before I can receive this from God. All you need to do is believe. Come in faith. Jesus gave you everything. When he died on the cross and rose again. He's not about to give you something extra. He's done it all. He has done it all. He has given you everything that he can give. And use your place now to make the best of what he has given to you. Let me show you something beautiful again. Luke chapter 17. That says, under grace, it means not self-performance. Don't look to yourself. Because oftentimes people want to pray. And then they look for someone else to pray for them. Because they look at themselves and then they see all their flaws and all these things that shouldn't be seen. And then they say, no, 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 God cannot love someone like me. I mean, come on, think about it. He loved you when you were the worst of sinners. Is it now that you are not a child of God, born anew, just uh, growing in the faith, requiring to renew your mind and change how you think, that He will not love you less? And by the way, let me point out that renewal of the mind is not from a corrupt mind for a Christian to a holy mind, but it's from a pure mind, the mind of Christ to receive more and more into the perfect image of Christ. By His grace, hopefully we get to see all these things as we go through in the online church. Go through the scriptures in the online church. How often people think they get this. You know, sometimes I, I, I want I was sharing something with someone and the person said, I, I know this, I understand this, I already know. And then I thought to myself, if you already know these things, you won't be in the position you are right now. I won't have to be telling you the same things. Because it's not about head knowledge, it's about what you know that you know. It's about what you experience, that when the times are tough, what I don't know how to explain it. But the word of God needs to define your actions. Until the word of God defines your action and defines how you think, then that word, you don't yet know that word in the sense of deep, intimate relation with that word. If you abandon what you think you believe when the times are tough, that you never believed in the first place. Father, I thank you. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. The apostle said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. How often we hear this prayer made. Increase our faith, Lord. I won't be reading his answer, but I want to go to verse 10. That will be our focus for next service. And so likewise ye... No, 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 let me go to 8. Seven. So which of you having a servant, plowing and feeding cattle, we say unto him by and by, when he's come from the field, go and sit down to meet. And we not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup, and gird thyself, serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. But he thanked that servant, because he did the things that were commanded him, I trow not. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, Say, we are on profit, profitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. This is what Jesus Christ is speaking. He says, despite all the things you do. He says, the servant here would not be thanked. He's, and the servant should not even be expecting thank you in the first place. 
He says, in the same way, when you've done all those things, just take it, this is my responsibility. This is what I'm just doing, what I'm supposed to do. It's part of the life. Not go counting that God, I've done A, I've done B, so I'm expecting this. That's not how it works. That is not how grace works. Remember, you are living under grace, and this is what it means to live under grace. You see, grace is fun, but grace is also responsibility. Grace is fun, but grace is also responsibility. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Paul speaking to Timothy said unto him, I want to bring to your remembrance the prophecy that we made concerning you. That you motivated, I mean, I, I'm quoting out the Amplified, the classic edition, that you motivated and inspired by them may wage a good warfare. He said, There's a prophecy concerning that I've gone forth. He needs a for, um, Timothy, fold your hands and wait for them to be fulfilled. He didn't say, Timothy, wait for the good days that are waiting for you ahead of your life. No, he said, Timothy, remember those prophecies and get inspired by them. Get motivated by them. And by those prophecies, wait a good warfare. Grace comes with responsibility. And one of those responsibilities is being responsible for the outcome of your life. This is very important that I have to also teach the same thing here in this second service. It comes with being responsible for the outcome of your life. God is not about to do something for you. He has given you his word that with the word he may create what you want. Or what he wants in your life because the new creature has the mind of Christ. And so we desire the things of Christ. And because we desire the things of Christ, basically, we birth the Father's will that is what is in heaven, here on earth. And He has given us the word. It is His will that you may prosper and be in good health. But it's not going to happen until you choose to apply that word, to get inspired by those words, and to walk in line with those, that word of prophecy, to produce that. The Father is glorified and will bear much fruit. We are from above as he is. So are we here on this earth. These are words and a web. I can call them prophecies. You see, because prophecies are either a description of things that are to come. Or they are speaking into existence of things that should be. So these prophecies have gone forth concerning your life. It is your place to take the word and create them. If you fold your hands and wait for your ministers. Fold your hands and wait for your pastors. Fold your hands and wait for whosoever, then your life would not be as glorious as the Father wants you to be. You are living under grace. This is what grace, living under grace means. Hallelujah. Implies responsibility. But not just responsibility in the terms of being responsible for the outcome of your life, but also responsibility in the sense of being responsible for the outcome of the body of Christ, the growth of the body of Christ. You see, some Christians are only concerned about themselves, what they will wear, what they would eat, the kind of job they will get, how much money they can make. Their motivation in life is about them and for some, their family. And that is how far it goes. So they're praying for a job. Why do you need a job? So I can take care of myself and my family. And maybe give offerings or whatever gifts they want to give to the church. Whether they call it tithes, whether they call it first fruits, whatsoever it is, is called. But the primary reason is themselves. So the whole world revolves around them. Their prayer time, their time of intercession is all about them. Time to pray in the church. So let us pray for whatever, life partner, whatever. They pray earnestly. They say, let's pray for the pastor. Let's pray for the growth of the church. Let's pray for the leadership of the church. And their voices come down, not as passionate as things concerning them. That's a myopic view. Grace, living under grace implies being responsible even for the growth of the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 15 and 16, he says, But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, 
make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. The amplified version says that the body grows when each part plays its own role effectively. When each part works properly. You have a role to play in the growth of the body of Christ. Now this role may differ. It is the Father that gives unto everyone different gifts and different callings and different responsibilities. So I cannot state it all. But everyone has a part to play for the growth of the body of Christ. And that's what it means living under grace. If you're only concerned about yourself, you're getting it wrong. And I'm not talking about just giving tithes and offering and all that. I'm not talking about being in the service groups and all that. Some of us are called to the fashion angle, to clothe people, to make them look good, maybe to de de design beautiful costume for the mu uh, music ministers and all that. You're adding something to the kingdom. Some are called into technological field. Some are called into the building aspect. And everyone applying the wisdom and the gift God has given to them. For the growth of the body, for the improvement of our world. Remember, we are, it's about improving this earth that we are in. Not just getting people saved, but also improving their life. Their life standards. So, remember, Jesus Christ had a purse from which he helped the poor. He was preaching the gospel. He was healing the sick. He was raising the dead. He was casting out the devils. And he was also helping them physically. So that is what it means to live under grace, people of God. It means right standing with God. Living under grace means empowerment for excellence. Living under grace means right living with God. Living under grace means you're no longer operating based on your own abilities. Living under grace implies a whole lot of responsibility. So the question is how much have you been living under grace? You know as Billy Graham, blessed of God, would say, the hour of decision is the time of decision. What will you do with the word which you heard? That is the important thing. What will you do with the word which you heard? You've heard the word, but what will you do with it? Will you just recite it and tell someone else what you heard? That is fine. Will you just jot as you've done during the service and then you keep your notes? Or will you let it change your life? Will you meditate upon it? And get inspired by it renew your mind and get transformed by it your choice you make it this moment so I advise you right now to begin to thank the father for the word say father thank you for your word that came for the power blessing to me thank you jesus for in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen if you have a question on our page um website if you remember you can type your questions on the interaction hub. Be logged in as a guest. There's a place there for you to drop your question. If you're joining us through Facebook as well, you can drop your questions on Facebook right there. And then we'll gather all these questions and answer them. We may answer them during the service or we could reply you right there on the different platforms where you dropped your questions. Now, before we go, there are a few things I would love to share with us. You know the Any Christ ministry given to part that is the first one is to establish first of all to win souls, which we do with our outreaches. Second is to establish souls, establish people. So not just raise converts, but to raise people, men and women that are strong, grown in the faith. And so to carry out the second aspect of it he has given us the online church but the online church is not just the service which you're part of today we also have a platform so we have a group on social media and various places where you can ask questions and interact you see but the challenge there is this everything is all grouped together lumped together but on our platform we have everything broken into categories so you have a segment for asking your questions you have a segment where you have tips and hints on how to make the best out of the online church you have segments for bible study and all that and it's very mobile friendly 
so you can get these notifications on your phone you just join to join is very easy you have to do is go to our website ironchrist.org go to ironchrist.org i believe it will be displaying on the screen very soon if it's not already doing that it's not already on the screen ironchrist.org you see the link there join our online church and it's as easy as that trust me it's going to be a great time great time great time being part of the growing online church hallelujah now we also have our devotionals we read a part of it today's devotional our daily work of perfection is available on our online store for this month we're offering free subscription yes i know we've got more than half of the month but the world is so beautiful i mean you could subscribe for free and be blessed by the world you see how 13 days or they're about to go the world can still transform you so it's one to subscribe Go to our website, you find all the information you need there. And we also offer it in three formats. We send it to your email address when you subscribe. So you can always get notifications on your mobile phone if your email is connected to your phone. You also we also give the opportunity to download the ebook version so that if you're offline you can easily read devotional. And then finally, we give you login details to log into us to the portal to read the devotional for the day. Now we have different material, ministry material released out there, many free and some paid products for your edification and for your growth. And then I have with me here today one of our products, the Perfection Series. Have me here the Perfection Series. In this, we have sin. It is not about heaven or hell. We have holiness beyond our sinless life. We have Christ, salvation of our God. I mean, it's a three-in-one collection. Now we deliver to anywhere in Nigeria, so if you go to our online store, you get a copy. If you prefer the e-version, it's also available on the store. It's going to be a great blessing to you, I can assure you that people that have read the book and back the different testimonies. I mean, this book covers everything you need to know about the basis of Christianity. All is sin, all is holiness, salvation, covers it. Okay, if there's any doubt you may have, and I'm not just saying it because it's a, this ministry's product. But because I've also been blessed by it. Amen. And now if you have any questions or you want to contact us, our email address, inquiries at ironchrist.org. You can also find our contact details on our website. Once again, ironchrist.org. And I said we're going to be having our next um, service next Saturday. First service, 7 a.m. Second service, 12 noon. Of course, this is West African time. So wherever you are, mark it in your calendar. Get ready to be blessed by the world. And we're going to be looking at faith. And I'm looking at faith, how faith works. I don't know how long we'll be on the topic of faith. We're going to be looking at faith. Faith is something very simple. And perhaps you know how faith works and all. But I'm sure you'll be blessed. You know, because I heard a certain minister say, So none of us have ever said, I've eaten rice before. So I don't eat rice again. So you eat rice once. And that is the end of eating rice in your life. No, you eat it again and again. And you enjoy it again each time you eat it. So also with the word. Praise God. Looking forward to seeing you. All right, so that's that. Now let's close. I would love to pray with you. So, Father, I declare your people. Continually walk in the blessings which you have bought for them in the name of Jesus. This coming week is a glorious week. Week filled with testimonies in the name of Jesus. They move from glory to glory and their past shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day in the name of Jesus. We thank you because all that they lay their hands to do prospers because they are the righteous. We thank you because this week, by reason of subscribing to the word of God, they live under the fullness of grace and experience the fullness and the beauty of grace. This coming week is a glorious week, much more glory than they've ever experienced. Lord, we give you praise, we give you all the things. We thank you because you supply all their need according to your riches in glory. If there be any one that is troubled in heart, that I thank you because that root of their troubles, that root of their concerns, this day is dissolving in the name of Jesus. If it be wisdom they need, they receive that wisdom in the name of Jesus. If it be the manifestation of the miracles, the manifestation of the miracles occurs in the name of Jesus. And I declare if anyone be sick in the body where sickness be on the head down to the sole of their feet. I declare also an illness be even be emotional sickness, depression. I curse that 
sickness in the name of Jesus. Christ have bought your health and you are healed this instant in the name of Jesus. That will let them go. Carry out spara gage kundi it is done. Give him praise. Give him all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a privilege and a joy having you with me this morning or afternoon or noon or night, wherever you are watching us. So we have the privilege of bringing the word of the Father to you again. It's been Chinano Prince, Jeremy, Ria in Christ Ministry, I in Christ Online Church is what you've been doing for the past an hour, hour plus. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. In Jesus' name.